Hey, it's Reese G coming in from Cluttered Kitchen uh, for a meal prep video. Um, I wanted to show you my meal plan for the week and show you some of the meal prep I'm doing for certain things for that. And just uh, to go along with my tip video the other day uh, to show you how I do some of my meal prep and how I box it up. Um, and get it ready for the refrigerator, how it's all done, ready to go when I come home from work and, or before I work, you know, to set it up for the Instant Pot and whatever. So, I thought I would start with a great marinade. I'm going to marinate some, um, some, uh, vegetables for some fajitas. I'm going to make the filling for part of a meatloaf. I'm going to prep all the vegetables for the week, and I thought I'd let you see what I do and how I do it. Okay, so first, we're going to start with the marinade for the vegetables. It's also supposed to be for the meat, but I'm not doing the meat right now. I'll probably make this marinade uh, in two batches, but right now I'll do one um, for the video. And get the vegetables cooked. And that way, all I have to do is, I already have pre-cooked Mexican-flavored um, roasted chicken uh, that I made a few, last week. And I'm going to just heat that up with the vegetables, and that'll be the fajitas. Um, and I already made the green sauce. That's for another video, which you should be seeing in the next week. Um, and I have some Hatch Greens chili sauce that I made a few months ago, if you saw that video. Uh, that would be very useful here, too, for the fajitas. Um, I'm going with a recipe that Rachel Ray just had on her show for sheet pan, uh, sheet pan fajitas. So I'm taking the basic idea of that and her basic marinade, changing it a little bit. And I'm going to marinate the veg. Alright, there's um, poblano peppers. There's regular little mini, mini bells. You know I love my mini bells. Um, I also have some yellow squash. That I've already have a little cut. And of course some onion. I'm going to chop all that up. Okay, so we're going to start with the marinade. The marinade is supposed to be... Um, all right, it's supposed to be half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. I'm going to use my old friend from Pampered Chef, their uh, salad dressing thing, because it's got measurements on it already. And that way I can figure out the half a cup um, of oil. Okay, so. Okay, so it says four ounces right on here. Okay, it says four ounces on there. I'm going to go with that. Okay, so it's four ounces or half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Um, this is just regular extra virgin olive oil from ShopRite. It's their, um, the line that they do, that they um, have, that they have their stuff made in Italy. Uh, so it's like great, really nice green olive oil. It's a couple of teaspoons of Worcestershire, 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 Worcestershire sauce. Uh, she puts fresh garlic. I'm not doing fresh garlic. I'm too lazy today. Um, so a little garlic powder, a little onion powder, about equal amounts. All right, and then she says a tablespoon of cumin. I do not have a tablespoon of cumin. I have a teaspoon of cumin, so it's going to have to do. Um, I do have a tablespoon of coriander, and this is coriander from my yard from last summer. Um, I always have cilantro going crazy back there. Um, tablespoon of a mild chili powder. And then she said a teaspoon or so of oregano and half a teaspoon, she said, of smoked paprika. But I'm going to use a little more than that because I love this stuff from, it's from actually from Spain. And it's wonderful and smoky and that's why, she, that's why she's using it. 
because it's smoky. Okay. And I am just going to pump this and mix it together. Okay, there's the marinade. Okay, marinade is done. Okay. And then I'm going to slice up these vegetables. has already been partially used. I'm going to peel off the outer parts. Okay, some of it I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to do it. That way we can speed through it. Okay. recipe only calls for two. Well, I bought three. That way I could do something with one of the others at some point this week. Okay. Of course, my friend, my friend, the uh, grapefruit spoon. Okay. Mini bells. You know how much I love my mini bells. What I like to do is slice off the top first. Okay. While I'm doing them, I've thrown into my salad spinner. Uh, this is just a cheapy one I have from uh, Walmart. And it's a little bit of vinegar. All right. A little splash of vinegar. Because that will remove anything that's bad from, yeah, that's on the pepper. Okay. Now, of course, and of course, you know, I love to clean out all my peppers with my grapefruit spoon. Actually, this is one that I inherited from my mother-in-law when she passed away. And it's narrower than my other one, so it's better for thinner, smaller peppers. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to whiz all of this stuff through the salad spinner and then I'm going to um, strain them off. Okay, I'm going to strain them off, uh, rinse them real well.
soaking in vinegar water. Um, I'm not going to soak the I'm not going to soak the onion because the onions already because the onion I'm just going to put through the um, put put in the oven the way it is. Okay, I'm just going to slice it thickly. You hear those robins? I hear the robins. Okay, so that's thickly sliced. Okay. All right, that's ready to go. All right, so we got the dressing, we got the marinade ready. All right. All right, they've been soaking a few minutes. All right, now I'm gonna dump the vinegar water all over them again because we don't want them to taste like vinegar, obviously. This won't mind. Just okay, this one is from Progressive, which I think is a uh, Walmart brand. One of these pull string ones. I find it does the job just fine. Don't need an expensive one. Alright, I like to do it twice to make sure that things are totally dry. Piece of bell pepper. A piece of. Well, considering how dirty our floor is, I'm just going to throw it out. <laughs> hey, see, I'm sorry. See, a little bit of water came through. Okay. So these are the papitas. They're ready to go. Now I'm just going to. Okay. Have a vessel ready. Okay. I'm going to pour out. Okay, most of this. I'll save the rest for the other for uh, the upcoming night. Okay. And okay. I'm gonna uh, I don't need this one coated. Okay, I'm gonna coat them all in the marinade. Let the marinade let it sit in the marinade for a few minutes. Actually I think I should have used something a little bit quicker. I use that big bowl. Okay. All right, so we're gonna let this sit for a few minutes. While it's sitting, I also have some tea pods I bought for you. I'm gonna dump those in and clean those up. Same thing. Rinse them through a little bit of vinegar water. Get them ready to go for cooking this week. I'm going to put them into a green box when they are ready. vegetable today. I think it's a good idea. It kills off any microbes that might be on there. They're bad for us. I've done it with strawberries in the past, but I've never done it with um, vegetables. Got the idea from Jen Chapin. You guys should be following her too. She's a wonderful working mother with a much bigger subscri subscriber list than I have. But um, I really like her videos, and um, she does this, and I think it's a very good idea. I don't know if all of this is going to fit in here. Ah, might just fit. 
Does it fit? Okay, it fits. All right, one down. All right. Then I also want, well, okay. So, this oven has been going for a little while. All right, let me put this over here. Chicken sits over there, it's gonna get hot. We don't want hot, do we? Alright, put that over there. Since Roxy's not around, we're safe. Okay. Oh, okay. You have it facing this way? Okay. And Okay. So as usual, sheet with sheet pan dinners. Okay, this is a sheet pan dinner. You have to put your parchment paper down, okay? I'm going to take all these vegetables, I'm going to spread them on out. Alright, this is all going to be for one night this week. I'll show you the, uh, show you the meal plan in a minute. Alright. Okay. I like to put them all with their own group. So, all squash in one section. Squash is mainly for me, because I know my family. I'll try to squeeze some into their food, but they're going to go, no, and put it aside. I know you guys. You know, squash is good for you. Okay. All right, so the bell, basically the uh, everything else separated into its own kind. Okay, the poblanos. Kind of a single layer of everything else. And then the onions. I'm just going to put them, I'm going to rub them through what's left in the, uh, what's left in the uh, marinade thing. Alright, I'm just going to rub, just going to rub them through a little bit, right through the what's left of the marinade. Okay. I don't care if they're really all that well seasoned. I throw them in. All right, Evan set at 450, 450, and, um, okay. And they're gonna go in for 15 minutes. Okay, so. Whoa, that's hot. Okay. Middle of the oven. Okay. While okay, so while that's going, I've got some shiratake. That's what they look like. Shiratake noodles. They're made out of tofu. Some are made from tofu. I didn't see that this one was tofu. I'm not supposed to have tofu. But whatever. They're basically made from yams. This one it has some tofu in it for some reason. It was also a little cheaper. It was 20 cents cheaper than the other brand. I didn't know this. All right, not a big deal. I haven't had um, tofu or soy in a couple of weeks. What you're supposed to do with these is you're supposed to drain them really well. Wash them. Right, this is how you prep them. You rinse them. All right, anybody who's on paleo, keto, low-carb... South Beach, all of those different plants, Atkins, whatever, probably know what these are. All right, they're basically yam flour, and they're noodles. Okay, you're supposed to drain them really well and let them sit and let them dry out. All right, I'm gonna let these dry out. That way, they're ready to go for me. Okay, while that's doing it, I'm gonna get together the dog uh, food. Or anyway, part of it. Um, I open up these packages. I think they open on the corner. It's supposed to open on the corner. Mm, here's the corner. And it always gives me trouble. Can never get it. <laughs> nope. How come I got it? Like no problem yesterday. The other day. All right, here we go. Sometimes I need a piece of paper towel. 
to help me peel it back. Ah, there we go. Okay. And I put it in my micro cooker. All right. This is the quickest way I know of to cook ground beef or ground meat of any kind. Okay. I just cook this up plain, no seasoning, no nothing. Roxy eats it up. Right. She loves ground beef. All right. I put it into a micro cooker with a silicone lid on it. All right. And I put it on high. Started on two, for two minutes on high. Okay, so while that's doing that, right, we can do some other things. Okay, and I just buy these big things, brown mushrooms at uh, Costco. I come home, I can't rinse these, otherwise they get too soft or whatever. And I just throw them into a green bag. Okay, so right there, that's done, ready to go. Okay, then next, what do we want to do next? Oh, I need to, okay, all right, there's the next thing, all right? For some reason, your father did something with the green one of these. <laughs> Where is this? It's not in the tool around where it's supposed to be. So, I have no idea where, thank God I have, this package came with a three pack of them. And so I have others, okay? And I'm going to, all right. Now this is for the meatloaf. I'm gonna be making a bacon meatloaf later this week, I think on Friday. And I needed to peel and cook off a carrot and it said actually it said for a, it showed you like different ways of making basic meatloaf to make meatloaf a little bit better and it said for this specific version to omit the carrot and the celery but i like carrot and celery in meatloaf i put it in all the time so i'm keeping it in Cleaning off. Okay, I'm gonna run these through the dishwasher, but the first thing I'm gonna do, obviously, is do my thing. All right, that takes. All right, take this out. All right. It's only partially cooked. I flip it, okay? So it cooks for two minutes on the other side. See, it's not even really cooked yet, all right? Two minutes, I put, give it another two minutes on the other side. Okay. This onion is also for the meatloaf, all right? Okay. in the microwave, I mean in the uh, food processor, and mince it up, put it all on a hot skillet, soften the vegetables up, I'm just going to pulse this down.
First, I'm going to mix this together. Okay, now you got to turn it. Okay, I'm just going to cook this down until it softens a little bit. And this will be ready for our meatloaf. I'm ready to be sick. about five minutes or so. Okay. I'm going to pre-season it a little bit. I'll just, I just won't season it yeah, when I make the actual meatloaf. Salt, and I think I'm also gonna go with a little bit of uh, since there's bacon wrapping the meatloaf, I'm gonna go with the bacon seasoning also. After that, I'll link in the bottom just to add a little more bacon y three or four out. The, bake, the meatloaf is adapted from the latest issue of I to do it living. But I'm um, adding a little bacon, bacon, excuse me. <laughs> um, yeah, give me another minute or so. And I think I will also. You heard nothing. <laughs> I like to. Oh, yeah, the microwave thing is in there. That really helps me a lot. Alright, well, sometimes I like to speed it along. Yeah, a little bit. Water. After a minute or so, after the water evaporates, it's soft. Four minutes, I drain off a bunch of the liquid because it's mainly fat and the dogs aren't supposed to have a lot of excess fat. Okay. And then I take my mix and chop and I grind it up as best I can. It doesn't have to be totally Okay. 
Then I put it in the micro for another two minutes. steaming. I'm going to cook off four sweet potatoes. There's a salad I want to make later this week for lunch. So I'm going to cook them in the Instant Pot. This is my uh, Pioneer Woman one. Uh, six quart. I'm going to put it on manual for 15 minutes. It's sealed. Uh, in 15 minutes, I'll give it a, and in 15 minutes, I'm going to give it a 10 minute natural release, and those will be done, I'll let them cool off, and they'll be ready for some kind of a taco salad or something I saw later this week. Uh, I mean, well, I saw it already, it's in um, one of the latest magazines that I have. I'm not a huge fan of Martha Stewart, but there were a couple of recipes in her latest magazine that look decent. For some unknown reason, I've gotten free subscriptions to this magazine for years. I'm not a fan of hers, and usually I have no use for the magazine. But, this month, for some reason, there's like several recipes I'm curious about. So, there's one on a card that's a salad of some kind, a taco salad or something, um, with sweet potato. And since I've been eating a lot of sweet potatoes, and I make them anyway, once a week, um, I think a couple of these are going to go into that. Alright, so that's that. Vinegar. By the way, I have gallons and gallons of vinegar downstairs. Alright. Okay, that's good enough. Mm. I didn't say if you didn't want to get that cold. Okay, first off, I'm going to do the broccoli. And this is how I've been doing broccoli lately. Um, I have been not just cutting off the florets like most people do. I've been also peeling down the stems and using the stems too uh, for recipes here and there. So where did I put the peeler? Where did I put the peeler? And now when I need the peeler, I can't find the peeler. Oh, Lordy, where'd you put the peeler, Risa? There you go. There's the peeler. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do it with broccoli and, of course, cauliflower. So this is what I've been doing with broccoli lately, okay? I cut off just the end. Then I take a knife and take off part of these outside leaves as best I can. Okay, on each one. Because you realize the stems have just as much vitamin and mineral as the rest, or vitamins anyway, of the rest of the uh, broccoli and the cruciferous vegetables, which means that they're very good, supposedly in preventing preventing cancer. There's things in them, supposedly. <laughs> Hello, visitor. Who is very low to the ground. Miss Roxy. Miss Roxy. 
Okay, that's the first thing I did. Then I cut the florets off. Okay, there's the florets. I break them apart the best I can. Okay. Put them in the water. Alright. Then I take my peeler and I peel a little bit of the fibrous outside. Alright, and wash that too. I mean, for the broccoli. Then what I do with the cauliflower. Is I. Break off the longish. Pieces. And then I go around. And cut the center. And whoop. You know what's gonna happen. Thank God I can put them through the then in washing. Okay. I take off about an inch off the end of this. So I'm gonna save that too. Alright. First of all, let's okay. of course just get it all coated with that water. Okay. 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 If I'm worried about a little bit of liquid, then I put a little um, piece of uh, egg towel in there. And I'm going to do the same thing with the tiny flour. I'm going to chop these up a little bit because they're bigger. So you usually call it out for some reason before it's a bigger. Okay. The smaller ones, I'll keep the way they are. I am not slicing this because I'm going to make buffalo, uh, recipe for buffalo cauliflower with it and you need florets. So. so I'm just going to cut it into the bigger pieces into smaller pieces. Okay. Alright. And then just put the cauliflower in the water. Okay. And then I'm going to take, I do is I take this and peel away some of this stuff because I'm not going to eat the leaves. Um, Okay, then I slice the, because when these stems are st 
stir fried with the rest of the vegetable, it, uh, they're fine. The texture is fine. It just tastes like the rest of the vegetable, which is exactly what we want. Okay? So. This is ready to go for, since it's a vegetable still, I'm putting it in a green box. But it doesn't need to go in a green box, but since that's all I got over here. Two green boxes. Okay, that's that. And then... There are our vegetables for fajitas. Alright, I'm gonna let those cool. Alright. Okay, so that's that. Obviously, this goes with this and that. Alright, and then you can see the dog meat is all done. It's no longer red. What I do is I fill it with cold water. A stops the cooking. Okay. I throw a few ice cubes in. And that way, if there's any fat in here, any fat left, it'll rise to the top. And then I can peel it off because the dogs really shouldn't have a lot of fat. Okay, and then I'll just take it and put it in a regular container, one of these regular um, clear containers they use, the uh, food storage ones from like uh, from the Chinese or whatever. All right. Or one of these wonderful, excellent boxes, brilliant boxes from Rubbermaid. I think these things are fabulous. They're almost as fabulous as the green boxes. Okay. And, um, all right, so we've got broccoli. All right. We got broccoli. We got, wait a minute, where did I put it? The uh, mushrooms. Did I put them over there? Mushrooms over here somewhere. Alright, whatever. So I put mushrooms in a bag. Here they are. Alright, so we got dog food ready. We got mushrooms ready. 
We got pea pods ready. We got cauliflower for cauliflower uh, for uh, buffalo cauliflower. We got broccoli for stir fry or whatever. We got broccoli for the week after. We got fajita vegetables to go into fajitas next week. We got the mixture for the meatloaf done. Um, I'm going to also chop up a ton of what's left. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to do some quick veg prep for salads. Got a lot of little end, little bits and bobs here near the end of the week, you know, or the beginning of the week, whatever. Um, so, for salad, I like to chop these this way. to the squash. This is jicama. I like it in salads because it's very, um, tastes almost like apple. It's a little sweet. So I shred a little of it. Just makes it easier to eat. It's a tuber that is Mexican and you can use it if it's if you, if you buy it, you know, if you buy a big one, a round one, and you peel it carefully, you can slice it into like, sort of like tortillas. For, um, Gwyneth Paltrow did it on the Rachel Ray Show, and I've been eating it for years and never thought of doing that. So, I still have a little bit left from a big one that I did that with. So, I thought I would chop up. And peel up some of it, chop it up. I love, I love hickory. All right, and then I've got, all right, I've got to do, I've got two organic carrots, different colors. This is not a parsnip. It is a white carrot. Uh, I'm gonna chop up what's left of this cucumber for some salad. Then I got these teeny little, these little cucumbers too. I already washed them and dried them. Ready to go. Okay, just turn that. And then, obviously, these carrots are still dirty. So, I'm going to put this, make sure that just fit. Yep, that just fit. Okay, that's enough of that. And then I'm going to put this in a green bag for the rest of this. That will have room to cut my lettuce and peel and cut those. They say usually to put only one kind of vegetable or fruit into a bag, but I've been using these bags for years, and yes, you can mix the vegetables. Okay. Of course, I'll chop up the lettuce. I like to cut the end off first. I like to cut it one way and then the other. That way you don't get long stringy pieces.
Watch the ice has to come down. Alright. And these are already chopped off the ends. So I need to use peel them. This big side, it's always harder to slice. That's why I usually do it in the food processor. But okay. Put it into the. <laughs> into there. Okay. Just have some tomatoes in here too that were not washed. salad, veggies, and then all that's left to do is, as I said, all the fat rises to the top when you put the ice cubes in, right? So then I take a big spoon, congealed fat off the top. I don't care if I grab a little bit of the, uh, of the um, meat itself with it. I mean, it's, I'm still going to probably leave a little of this fat in here, but it's still going to be a way less than it would be if you didn't rinse it. So. I mean, look at all that fat. Look at it's all fat. Every drop of it is fat. Right? And sometimes what I do is I lean it forward to scoop it and get more of the fat off. Okay. Do this a couple times a week. That way I have beef for Miss Roxy. This is organic beef. So it's good quality. I think it's 
which is what most hamburger be meat is. And uh, then I then I strain it out, package it, and we've got beef for the week for the dogs. Right, look at all that fat that came out. Jeez, it's a lot of fat. Strain a little bit. There you go. You got dog, right? Um, I also made those uh, um, chicken livers, which I also know they love. It's a great way to get them to eat chicken because they're very picky. Boxy and Zeki, very picky. Very annoying and picky. Um, so, the only way to get them sometimes to eat chicken is to give them chicken livers. Otherwise, they would eat beef all week. So, um, anyway, so as you can tell, that's my whole week. I made, I made, I prepped some vegetables for me, for a meatloaf. Uh, I prepped vegetables for fajitas. I made salad. I cooked the dog food both kinds, although you didn't see me do the chicken livers. I packaged up all my veggies for the week. I got buffalo cauliflower started by chopping up all the cauliflower. And I cleaned all my vegetables, got them ready for the week. That's what you have to do. Sometimes it takes, I would say the most, it takes me about two, two and a half hours, depending on whether I've got the whole day, what? Nothing or um, whether I only have a couple of hours before I go to work or whatever. So so I got my buffalo cauliflower started, my meatloaf, my salads for the week, and dog food for the week. And so it's great. Everything is done. And then I just have to, right before I go to work, just slip things into the Instant Pot or whatever, or make myself a salad and go, whatever. Life is so much easier. Knowing that it's all in there, it's all prepared, all ready to go. Um, so uh, sometime this week, hopefully, you will also see the meatloaf when it's done, and you will see the um, color, the, the buffalo cauliflower and the fajitas, the sheet pan fajitas, um, hopefully. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed watching me meal plan and meal prep. Oh! Let's not forget the meal plan. Let's, let's show the meal plan. Oh, yeah. All right, so as we know, I like my little best memories gather around the table, my little meal prep bit, book. Um, so for this week, tomorrow we're having corned beef. I mean, not tomorrow, Sunday. We're having corned beef with little red, with red potatoes. Okay? I'm going to make the corned beef with the Guinness beer in the Instant Pot. It's going to be a treat for me because I'm not supposed to have beer. Um, and for dessert, we're going to have the leftovers of that chocolate bomb cake. Woohoo! Chocolate bomb cake. All right. Monday is going to be a risotto, um, which is what I most of the time, at least once a month, I do that on a Monday because I can do a mushroom risotto. I can do it in the Instant Pot and it's quick. Um, Tuesday is going to be those chicken fajitas. So all I have to do is defrost the cooked chicken and put the chicken and the cooked chicken and the cooked vegetables right on the sheet pan, 10 minutes in the oven, done. I'll serve it with siete tortillas for me, which are cassava, and regular tortillas for Steve. I'll make cauliflower rice. I'll make Mexican rice for everybody else, and that way everybody's happy. Um, Wednesday, I'm going to leave everybody with a pasta. Thursday's going to be leftovers. We always have lots of leftovers. Um, Friday, I'm going to use up some of that leftover ham from a few months ago. Um, I keep forgetting to bring up packets of it. Either I'll make a soup or I'll make a casserole or something. I don't know. I'll think, think of something. Saturday is going to be that meatloaf. Okay. And the buffalo cauliflower. Okay. So that's our week. There's the meal plan. Okay? Uh, so we got the meal plan, and you saw all my meal prep. Um, something you should be doing. Meal prep is very important. 
for a sane kitchen life the rest of the week, okay, for sanity. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed watching my meal prep, my meal plan, and um, subscribe, press that little bell, and come back again for more meal prep, meal planning, and cooking at Reese's Cluttered Kitchen. Bye.